All right, guys. We are ready to close the transfer hatches. We wanted to say goodbye and thank you. I am bringing home today two wonderful crew members, Scott and Mikhail. So thank you so much to everyone for your support and for your work. Well, we've achieved a lot, especially for Scott and Mikhail. We are very grateful to this crew, to you, Misha, and to you, Scott. Also, thank you to the mission control centers in Moscow and in Houston. And good luck, guys. We'll see you soon on the ground. And some quick words from the Soyuz commander, Sergei Volkov, who's bringing the two one-year crew members home first. And then Yuri Malenchenko there on the left, just uh, also offering his congratulations and his thanks to uh, the three getting ready to depart the International Space Station. Again, Scott Kelly and Mikhail Korninenko uh, wrapping up 340 days on board the orbiting laboratory. For Sergei Volkov, 181. He's going to be commanding the Soyuz craft uh, through tonight's activities and the descent back down to Earth. But uh, definitely a uh, pretty significant moment for the departing year-long crew members who have been on board the International Space Station since March 27th of last year. So uh, obviously very big steps for them to now depart what's been their home for the last roughly 12 months and uh, get ready to make their way back down to Earth. It's gravity, their families, and uh, life uh, as it was over a year ago. And uh, once the hatches get closed, we'll stand by for the official hatch closure time and a location of the station. And again, there's two hatches to close. There's one on the Soyuz craft itself and one on the uh, station side as well, inside the Poisk module. Sergei Volkov doing one final wipe down of the uh, ceiling ring around the Soyuz hatch before he closes it. And with that, Yuri Malenchenko sealing it up. The hatch is closed. The visiting vehicle officer reporting seeing the telemetry. The hatch is closed at 3.43 p.m. Central Time, 4.43 p.m. Eastern. And undocking has occurred 7.02 p.m. Central Time, 8.02 p.m. Eastern Time, while the station was flying just over the eastern part of Mongolia. So the Soyuz TM, uh, TMA-18M spacecraft undocked from the International Space Station 
Mikhail Kornienko, Scott Kelly, Sergei Volkov on their way home. A DC-7 is illuminated. In eight seconds, the BO works eliminated, uh, not eliminated, and we are maneuvering counterclockwise. Yes, this readiness is eliminated. The so one is not good, so as not, and the BO work is on. And the first separation burn occurring. You can see the thruster firings there on the Soyuz craft. Kelly, Kornienko, and Volkov inside. Seven three. The visiting vehicle officer here in Houston confirming the second burn has begun. The station is shifting to the right and up forty five degrees. Yes, выключение двигателя. There you can see the orbiting laboratory in full view from the camera on board the Soyuz craft, which uh, again undocked from the space facing side, so getting a great look straight down at the station and the Earth below. Both spacecraft right now just over the uh, very far eastern part of Russia, about to, uh, well north of the Sea of Japan. Uh, S18 is being issued. Can you see the Earth? Yes. Uh, from just under an hour ago, as the Soyuz spacecraft was descending under parachute, you can see the thick cloud cover in the overcast sky, but a beautiful light. Uh, the Soyuz uh, landing just a few hours after sunrise in Kazakhstan. This again, a recorded view from one of the Russian search and recovery helicopters. And so at this stage, the Soyuz capsule was well under its main parachute a massive parachute designed to slow the Soyuz down from a descent rate of 80 meters per second to just 7.2. Uh, the parachutes being uh, initially opened at an altitude of about 6.6 .6 miles. You can see the capsule descends upright, um, occasionally will land and roll over on its side, but in this case the capsule landed upright, um, so it made things easy uh, for the search and recovery forces. Again, you can see the thick cloud layer on the uh, lower deck uh, that the Soyuz passed through uh, before its landing. It's actually uh, fairly similar um, to the landing just one year ago in March uh, when NASA astronaut Butch Wilmore touched down uh, in Kazakhstan through some fairly thick clouds. Uh, the search and recovery forces finding the Soyuz today much quicker, though, uh, getting to uh, Kelly Kornienko and Volkov in a very expedited fashion. Um, all three crew members uh, out of the Soyuz within 30 minutes. Um, so definitely getting some uh, favorable weather. Uh, March, usually one of the most dynamic um, in terms of weather, uh, one of the most difficult um, when it comes to Soyuz landing. So this. Of the three uh, comfortable chairs that are set up in front of the cameras, uh, you'll be uh, getting a very clear view of that. Yeah. And we're standing by, we can see the crew members back, any idea who it is yet? 
I'm trying to get into position to see. Scott Kelly. Scott Kelly, back on Mother Earth after 340 days in space, Dan. Thumbs and up. We got a great view of him now. Uh, the folks here in Mission Control Houston letting out a, a very big cheer. Scott Kelly, uh, as you just said, returned after 340 days in space. NASA's one year crew member uh, conducted a lot of very important research back down on Mother Earth back down in Kazakhstan where he launched from just about 12 months ago right now. And back over at the capsule we can see uh, Mikhail Kornienko, the other one year crew member outside the capsule getting ready to get carried over as well. Do you work for mission control? <laughs> And Dan, uh, Scott Kelly, absolutely relishing the fresh air out here in the mid-morning hours here in, uh, in the southern steppe of Kazakhstan, breathing deeply, enjoying every second of his return to Earth. And we just saw Mikhail Kornienko go down the slide. He's getting carried over, so he'll be joining you shortly as well. So with that, all three crew members out of the Soyuz capsule safely down there on the step in Kazakhstan. One year mission, guys. I'm fine. Asking everyone to step back. Here comes. We step back. Step back and don't interfere. And we're seeing a big smile from Scott Kelly there. You can see just to his right, Steve Gilmore, uh, Scott's prime flight surgeon for his year in space. No stranger to cold landings in Kazakhstan. This is his fourth mission, his second landing in a Soyuz. Uh, 520 total days uh, in space across his uh, space flight career, 340 days in this historic year in space. And Dan, uh, Scott just looked at us and said, uh, the air feels great out here. I have no idea why you guys are all bundled up. With uh, temperatures hovering right around freezing, I imagine you guys are thankful for your jackets, but for somebody who hasn't uh, had the breeze on his face for have an opportunity uh, to uh, undergo about an hour to an hour and a half worth of field testing, uh, which is the first uh, critical biomedical measurement of uh, all of their uh, uh, all of their uh, biomedical functions. Uh, that will be the initial test of their response uh, to a gravity environment for the first time in a year. While we exercise there on a regular basis. Yeah. Is it the Kelly with a satellite phone in his hand, uh, assuming uh, making a call to friends and family. Uh, would you like to hold an apple, uh, not to eat one? Well, this. Let's move and there uh, at Scott's front. You can see NASA Chief Astronaut Chris Cassidy there in the black jacket. Just behind him, Joel Montalbano, manager for the International Space Station. Here another view of Mikhail Kornienko, the Russian cosmonaut who also just wrapped up the year in space along with Scott Kelly. And here's Scott Kelly making his way over to as Rob uh, reported, looking quite hale, uh, quite happy to be back on Earth and not at all affected by the cold weather down there in Kazakhstan. Happy to be breathing some fresh air uh, down on Earth after 340 days in space.